As the uh, fog of mayhem dissipates, the full picture of the terror of the crisis that took place in the nation's capital on Wednesday is coming into focus. First of all, um, we should say this. There is a death toll which now stands at five. And we should note that is one greater than the number of Americans who died in the attack on the U.S. government buildings in Benghazi over eight years ago. The last time an American government building was overrun by a rampaging and violent mob. And that led to more than two years of investigations, dozens of congressional hearings. Four of the people who were killed as a result of the Capitol attack appear to have been rioters themselves, one of whom was shot in the neck by police as she and others attempted to break into the Speaker's lobby just outside the House chamber, as you can see in this video. The most recent casualty of the mob that the president and other Republicans incited is Capitol Police Officer Brian Sicknick. He's a 42-year-old veteran. According to reporting, Officer Sicknick was struck with a fire extinguisher amidst the chaos on Wednesday. He succumbed to his injuries last night. And that means the U.S. Capitol is now the site of a homicide investigation, among other things. What we saw happen on Wednesday was the apparent murder of a police officer by members of a mob incited and directed to the Capitol by the president of the United States, who hoped they would successfully intimidate members of Congress out of certifying the rightful Democratic victory of his political opponent. And we all watched this terrible spectacle unfold live on television. The images broadcast were largely not the most horrifying ones of the day. Much of what we saw Silly costumes, people taking selfies and grabbing the speaker's lectern looked kind of like a group that might even attend a Trump boat parade. But there was something way, way darker, more violent, more sinister and more organized happening in that Capitol on Wednesday. And it's time we see it clearly. As crowds were gathering on the east side of the Capitol in the early afternoon, you'll remember that Republican Senator Josh Hawley, Missouri, walked by giving a supportive fist bump on his way in to object to the Electoral College results, to vote against Pennsylvania seating their electors who voted for Joe Biden. And after the rioters broke in, we got eyewitness accounts of people marauding through Capitol Hill looking for the vice president. A Reuters editor saying he heard at least three different rioters at the Capitol say they hoped to find Vice President Mike Pence and execute him by hanging him from a Capitol Hill tree as a traitor. Indeed, one of the insurrectionists erected a gallows with a noose right outside the Capitol. This is a video of a crowd chanting, hang Mike Pence. While Pence, the vice president, was in the Capitol, had to be taken to a secure location because he had failed to do the thing that Donald Trump told that crowd of people, that mob, that Mike Pence had to do or face consequences or face their wrath. Here's some more footage. This is of an AP photographer being attacked as he covered the riots. He gets shoved around the crowd as it descends on him. Eventually, he's pulled to safety by a cooler headed Trump supporter. Luckily, or Lord knows what would have happened to that man. We're also hearing firsthand accounts of the terror from other members of the press. Erin Schaff, staff photographer of the New York Times, writes that she was in the Capitol Rotunda when suddenly two or three men in black surrounded me and demanded to know who I work for. Grabbing my press pass, they saw that my ID said the New York Times and became really angry. They threw me to the floor trying to take my cameras. I started screaming for help as loudly as I could. No one came. People just watched. At this point, I thought I could be killed and no one would stop them. They ripped one of my cameras away from me, broke a lens on the other and ran away. And then there are the deeply unsettling images of this guy in the Senate chamber dressed in full tactical gear, carrying plastic zip ties. As Dan Coyes writes for Slate, those are actually flex cuffs, the plastic double restraints often used by police in mass arrest situations. They went into the Capitol, as Congress was counting electoral votes, equipped to take hostages, to physically seize officials, and presumably to take lives. It is entirely possible that there were people in that crowd looking to apprehend and possibly harm and possibly murder the leaders of the political class that the president 
and people like Mo Brooks and even to a certain extent Ted Cruz and Josh Hawley have told them have betrayed them. And if you don't believe me, listen to them in their own words. I have to warn you, this video, which was licensed from a self-described civil rights activist, is disturbing. We want you to go home. I'm recording. And there's so many people. It's just they're going to push their way up here. Uh, uh, bro, I see people out there get hurt. I don't want to see you get hurt. I just, we, will make a, we will make a path dead ass. Like, that's what I'm saying, we'll make a path, bro, please. Just let us make a path. We bet. Just let us make a path. Can the whole country hate you? I want you to go home. We hate go. you. Go. Go. Let's go. Get this shit. Another extremely, vid extremely disturbing video shows a crowd of Trump supporters trying to force their way in as officers, including one who is in serious distress, try to hold their ground. Death toll from Wednesday's rampage stands at five. Leaf's offer was killed. There's now an active homicide investigation to who murdered him, who the accomplices might be in that murder. The scale of evil that might have been done, the scale of death and destruction that might have been visited, is almost impossible to comprehend. What would have happened if they had gotten to Nancy Pelosi or Chuck Schumer or Mike Pence, do you think? And this was unleashed by the president in no uncertain terms. Let's go back on December 19th. Donald Trump tweeted, big protest in D.C. on January 6th. Be there. Will be wild. Speakers at that protest on Wednesday riled up the crowd. Rudy Giuliani called on them to settle the election via trial by combat. Republican Congressman Mo Brooks of Alabama said it was time to start, quote, taking down names and kicking ass. And then Donald Trump spoke to his supporters and laid it all on the table. We're going to have to fight much harder. And Mike Pence is going to have to come through for us. And if he doesn't, that will be a, a sad day for our country. We're going to walk down to the Capitol. And we're going to cheer on our brave senators and congressmen and women. And we're probably not going to be cheering so much for some of them. Because you'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength and you have to be strong. You hear that threat to Mike Pence? He's going to have to come through for us. That mob that went on to the breach, the Capitol, and searched for Mike Pence, saying they wanted to hang him. Well, at the same time that Donald Trump tweeted that Pence didn't have the courage to do what should have been done, they were roaming through that Capitol. Republican Senator Ben Sasser of Nebraska reported that Trump was delighted by the chaos as it unfolded at the Capitol. The Washington Post reports the Pentagon stood in the way of the National Guard being sent in to help. The president incited and facilitated a violent assault on Congress that resulted in five deaths, including the death of a Capitol Hill police officer. 
he must face legal consequences for those actions. Even though very few people were arrested on that day, we do know that some of the marauders and insurrectionists are now being apprehended by law enforcement, like this gentleman who put his feet up at a desk in Nancy Pelosi's office, and this West Virginia elected Republican delegate who live streamed on Facebook as he joined the mob storming through the Capitol. He was not the only professional Republican politician who was there. Here's former Pennsylvania congressional candidate Rick Saccone. You may remember as the guy who lost a special election in 2018 in the district Trump won by 20 points, also posting on Facebook about storming the Capitol. But tonight, more than 48 hours after that mob stormed the Capitol, we still haven't gotten a full briefing from the Capitol Hill police on what the hell happened and who was injured and who was hospitalized and how. Everyone is piecing this together from reporting and video, and it's hard to put the full picture together.